I want to begin by acknowledging our sponsors, which include the Center for East European and Russian Eurasian Studies, who not only uh, provided financial support, but are also handling the technical sides of our evening and uh, provided help to organize the whole event. Also the Joy C. and Jacob Greenberg Center for Jewish Studies, the Department of Slavic Languages and Literatures, the Department of History, and the Consulate General of the Republic of Bulgaria in Chicago. Romiana Christidi earned her PhD in Contemporary Bulgarian History from Sofia University, where she's now Associate Professor of History and Head of Jewish Studies. She is a member of the Bulgarian delegation to the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance and a member of the European Association for Jewish Studies. For her, quote, exceptional contribution in the realization of inter-ethnic and religious dialogue, the fight against manifestations of hate and xenophobia, and in strengthening relations between Bulgarians and Jews, she received the Shalom Award from the organization of the Jews in Bulgaria. Her areas of teaching expertise include contemporary history of Bulgaria from World War II until 1989, the Holocaust period, history of the Bulgarian Jews, education and ideology under communism. Dr. Rumyana Christidi has also been a visiting professor at the University of Haifa in Israel, Bar Ilan University, Israel, the University of Western Macedonia in Thessaloniki, the University of Carlo Bo in Urbino, Italy, and the Link Campus University in Rome. She's the author of two monographs and numerous articles. Today, she will address the experience of Jews in Bulgaria during the Holocaust, some of whom lived in territories where they were protected and survived, while others were sent to the camps to perish. She will help us understand the context for this situation, but also discuss how this history has been treated and how it has been variously hidden or highlighted. For many in this room, this will be a first encounter with the story. And for all of us, it will be a reminder that we must continue to attend to the history of the Holocaust and of a war fought in the 1940s but still being waged in the formation of memory and in the usage of the past. We thank Rumiana for being here today and sharing her work with us. So thank you very much, Professor Nico, for the introduction. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, although we have uh, uh, more uh, people online than here in, in the room, but I'm uh, very happy to see you here. And thank you very much for um, being uh, this evening uh, with me. Uh, I would like first to uh, thank the University of Chicago. I'm honored and privileged to, to, to be here. And um, I especially thank the uh, Joyce and Jacob Greenbeck Center for Jewish Studies, the Center for East European, Russian, Slavic Languages and Literatures, the Department of History, and of course, the Consulate General of the Republic of Bulgaria in Chicago and our very active, uh, uh, wonderful Consul General, Mr. Stankov. Thank you very much for organizing um, this uh, talk uh, uh, this evening. Uh, I'm historian, um, I'm the head of the Jewish studies program, but uh, uh, I'm first of all historian, so I will try to give you the historical context uh, of the events that happened during the Second World War, and uh, um, especially the, the fate of the Bulgarian Jews uh, in the years of the Holocaust. Uh, it's uh, it's a uh, well-known fact, at least among the historians, not among the, uh, the general public, the fact that the Bulgarian Jewish community uh, not just survived the Holocaust, but the whole community survived. And uh, so I'm going to tell you more about those things. So I'll give you the historical context, and then I would be happy to, to hear your questions and comments, uh, of course. You know, um, yeah, the point is to, to have a discussion and to, to hear uh, your um, opinion. 
So when we speak about the fate of the Bulgarian Jews during the Second World War, I think we should um, uh, start uh, a bit earlier, back in time, and uh, to see what we mean when we speak about Bulgarian Jews, Bulgarian Jewish community, and what is the profile of the community, and what is the history of the Jewish question in Bulgaria. And um, actually to see that there is no Jewish question in Bulgaria. There are other questions, but not the Jewish uh, one in the sense of uh, uh, that we have it in other countries in Europe. So I'm trying to explain why. So when we speak about Bulgarian Jews, we mean uh, the Jews, of course, the Bulgarian lands were inhabited by the Jews for many, many centuries. But uh, now we refer to, uh, to the Jews who uh, remained in the third Bulgarian state, the modern Bulgarian state, which was reestablished at the end of the 19th century in 1878, after five centuries of Ottoman rule. So we have uh, this uh, uh, reestablished modern Bulgarian state at the end of the 19th century, and we have different um, ethnic groups, we have uh, Bulgarians, Turks, Greeks, Armenians, Romans, I'm sorry, and of course the Jews. Uh, the community is, uh, the Jewish community in Bulgaria is a Sephardic community, predominantly Sephardic Jews uh, uh, speaking uh, uh, Ladino and having all this Sephardic culture. And um, a little part of it is uh, Ashkenazim community. So uh, from the very beginning, the state and the, the Jews uh, established excellent relations uh, uh, and relations of mutual tolerance, which is very important. I mean, it's uh, uh, from, from both sides. Tolerance generally could be only mutual and from both sides. So um, the constitution of Bulgaria, the first constitution, in 1879 uh, guaranteed uh, the political equality of all ethnic and religious minorities in the country. And uh, the Jews uh, will play an important role in the economical, cultural, political life uh, of the country. And some of the Bulgarian Jews will become even uh, famous worldwide, like the Nobel Prize um, winner for literature, Elias Canetti, born in the city of Ruse or the painter Jules Paskin, who was born in uh, the city of Vidin, and other um, as well. Uh, the, the Jewish community maintained excellent relations with uh, the state. The chief rabbi was appointed, um, and um, uh, also the, uh, the community received a government uh, allowance uh, according to the law that regulated religious and educational issues for the minorities. And just to illustrate and to give you an example for the relations between the state and the community, I will tell you that when the Grand Synagogue in Sofia, in the capital of Bulgaria, was inaugurated in 1909, it's very beautiful synagogue. You're very welcome to, to visit it. It's uh, the first biggest Sephardic synagogue in Europe. It's uh, very impressive and beautiful. So when it was inaugurated in 1909, uh, the Tsar, the royal family, the whole royal family, and uh, all the, the establishment of the state, all the first men of the, the country were there present in the synagogue. Uh, the Jews were very uh, loyal citizens of the state, and they uh, participated in all the wars that Bulgaria conducted for uh, national unification. So uh, there are some specifics about uh, the profile of the Jewish community in Bulgaria. And I will try to explain why in Bulgaria um, are missing the, the, the preconditions for, for uh, high antisemitism. In Bulgaria, the antisemitism was historically very low and it's very low even today. We have the lowest levels of antisemitism according to surveys. Uh, uh, this is a question that I can answer later on. Um, we have a survey conducted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, last year, uh, both in the Jewish community in Bulgaria and among the, um, the Bulgarian society, uh, which measures the levels of anti-Semitism today. But uh, it's also because of the profile of the community. Uh, the Bulgarian Jewish community was very well uh, integrated in the society. Uh, the Bulgarian Jews were never... Um, ultra-Orthodox Jews, so they didn't look like Jews. They uh, never had this uh, 
a specific attire and uh, the way you know to look like Jews. So you couldn't distinguish uh, the Jews from the rest of the people in Bulgaria. And uh, uh, the Bulgarian society, the Bulgarians are Christians from the ninth century. Uh, and the religion played an important role uh, as um, you know uh, national identification. But uh, religion didn't play negative role in Bulgaria. I mean, the, the Bulgarian Orthodox Church, unlike other uh, Christian church, uh, didn't uh, preach anti-Semitism. So it was not based uh, on this. And um, but the, the 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 Jewish community was not especially observant, and the Bulgarian uh, society was not fanatically religious. So what I'm trying to say that religion didn't play role, at least negative role, in the uh, relations between the Bulgarian uh, and the Jews. Uh, so uh, the community uh, was very well positioned in the Bulgarian society, occupied uh, high positions, uh, is very prominent Jews, especially in the cultural life. In the political life, we have some MPs, um, uh, but the community was not especially rich. It was very um, well integrated, well positioned, uh, um, many lawyers, many doctors uh, among the, the Jews, but um, the involvement in big businesses uh, was something like 5%. So we have some rich Jewish families, individuals, but... Um, not uh, uh, the community as a whole. So what I'm trying to say that another uh, precondition for high anti-Semitism is missing in Bulgaria. You know, there is no envy uh, because of, you know, uh, the, the wealth of the community or things like that, which is the case in other countries. So uh, the Bulgarians lived side by side with the Jews, uh, looked the same, worked the same, lived the same, and uh, fought together in all those wars for uh, national unification. And to give you some numbers about uh, how the community looked um, in the just in the eve of the Second World War, we speak uh, about 48,000 uh, uh, people in Bulgaria, Jewish people, some they died to uh, give uh, approximately 50,000, but according to the German documents, if we stick to the German documents, uh, we see the number 48,000 uh, uh, Jews uh, in Bulgaria, most of them living in the capital, in Sofia, and in some other big uh, cities uh, in the country. And uh, um, as I said, uh, most of them were uh, um, in the free professions, medical profession, in uh, among lawyers, uh, uh, in the trade of tobacco, and um, uh, in the export trade. Uh, but uh, very few were uh, actually uh, wealthy, uh, really wealthy people. So. Um, the Bulgarians viewed the Jews in normal times with indifference. We don't speak about especially good feelings or special feelings towards the Jews, nothing like that. It was like, you know, part of the society and uh, people viewed them with indifference in normal times. But we will see why it changed when other times came, times of uh, crisis uh, uh, during the war. So, um, in the 30s, and especially when uh, Hitler um, came into power in Germany, uh, and uh, this affected Bulgaria too, uh, the growth of Germany's political and economical influence uh, in Bulgaria grew. Uh, Bulgaria was ally of Germany during the First World War, so both countries, you know, are preparing for for uh, revenge for the um, you know were the the ones who lost the First World War. So. Um, we have uh, uh, this uh, uh, boost of uh, nationalistic feelings uh, in, in the 30s. So we have, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, even some organizations appear that copied the, the fascist documents uh, uh, and the, the Nazi documents, uh, but they didn't have uh, a big support among uh, the society. But of course, we had uh, these organizations in Bulgaria too. So uh, when the Second World War uh, uh, broke out, uh, uh, Bulgaria 
uh, declared neutrality at the beginning in, in September 1939. It tried to, to keep this neutrality as long uh, uh, as uh, it was possible. And it was possible until the beginning of 1941, when the German army was uh, already at the Bulgarian border. Uh, I'm not going now to elaborate on the reasons why Bulgaria joined the, the Third Reich. Of course, if you have questions after all, I will uh, explain. Uh, it was more or less natural choice for, for Bulgaria. And uh, uh, Bulgaria claimed territories that lost during the First World War, after the First World War, ethnically populated. So consider these territories, you know, uh, you know to, be, to be taken back. So uh, Germany became uh, the only uh, uh, country that said, uh, okay, you can uh, take what you consider yours. But also it was the German army uh, at the end of 1940 at the Bulgarian border. So Bulgaria had to decide uh, uh, what to do and joined the, the Third Reich uh, on the 1st of March, 1941. And of course, uh, uh, being a German ally, it uh, affected uh, the political life. Uh, I just would like to mention that uh, at this period in Bulgaria, uh, the political parties were forbidden. So we have authoritarian regime of the Tsar, Tsar Boris uh, III or King Boris uh, III. So he was the main political factor in the country. Uh, we had the National Assembly, uh, but uh, not really political parties. So it was an authoritarian uh, regime. Um, specific anti-Semitic uh, um, official actions began to take place in Bulgaria already in 1940. And uh, um, anti-Semitic, uh, anti-Jewish legislation was introduced um, in Bulgaria and uh, it was imposed from above. So we will have anti-Semitism as uh, uh, state policy from above in order to please Germany. Um, I would like to, to stress here that Bulgaria was an ally of Germany, but it was the only non-fighting ally. Bulgaria didn't fight, didn't uh, participate into military actions because uh, uh, it means to, to send the troops to the Eastern Front against the Soviet Union. So uh, it didn't happen. I mean, uh, King Boris realized that it's not... Uh, um, uh, a good idea to send the Bulgarian troops uh, against the Soviets on the, the Eastern Front. And even Hitler didn't pressurize that much on, on Bulgaria. So Bulgaria didn't fight. It was the only ally of Germany which was not uh, fighting on the Eastern Front. But the rest of the, uh, you know, the engagements uh, uh, as an ally, Bulgaria had to fulfill. And one of those uh, uh, engagements was uh, the to impose the anti-Jewish legislation. So we have, uh, um, I can elaborate if you have questions later on about the anti-Jewish legislation. We have the law for the protection of the nation. Uh, of a special importance for the anti-Jewish legislation because it's not only this uh, law, we have uh, um, supplementary uh, anti-Jewish legislation later on. So uh, I will just say here that in Bulgaria, we have full and heavy anti-Jewish legislation. You know, the deprivation of property, um, the um uh, deprivation of you know uh, from from positions they were removed from the positions the jews and uh, uh, all those measures uh, uh, against them also the the yellow stars and all the limitations that we know um, from the anti-jewish legislation in the other countries um well uh then we have uh, as i said uh, some other uh, supplementary uh, anti-Jewish laws concerning the, the Jewish uh, properties and the, the taxation on the, the Jewish uh, population. And uh, uh, I will start here with uh, the opposition in the parliament, in the National Assembly, even from that stage, when we don't speak yet about the deportation, we speak about the um, adoption of the anti-Jewish legislation. So we have um, MPs uh, from the opposition, academics, writers, uh, influential citizens, uh, 
which uh, uh, spoke against the law for the protection of the nation. Uh, all of them described uh, the law as unconstitutional, inhuman, immoral, and sided with the Jewish population. And um, from this very beginning, from 1941, uh, uh, we will see the Bulgarian Orthodox Church and the Holy Synod of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church uh, siding with the Jewish population. The Bulgarian Orthodox Church is the only church in Europe as an institution. We don't speak about individual uh, acts, individual acts we have everywhere in noble uh, 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 people and behavior, but we speak about the Holy Synod of the Bulgarian Church. We have the proceedings of all the, the, the meetings of uh, the Holy Synod of the Church, all the, their decisions, the protocols, uh, they are published. Uh, uh, and uh, so the Bulgarian church uh, declared itself uh, in defense of the Jews uh, from the very beginning uh, of the issue. And we will see this uh, lasting for three and a half years. And the leaders, the, the metropolites of the, uh, the church, uh, uh, Stefan of Sofia and Kirill of uh, Plovdiv, uh, they will be the most outspoken defenders of the Jewish population, not only uh, just speaking in defense of the Jews, but also with uh, uh, concrete actions, you know, uh, Christianings, uh, um, uh, appeals to the Tsar and the government, and many other actions of the leaders of the Bulgarian Orthodox uh, Church. But despite of these reactions uh, uh, against the, the, the law, uh, the, the majority uh, in the National Assembly uh, adopted the law for the protection of the nation and then uh, for the, the land property for persons of G Jewish origin and then another law for the taxation of the Jewish population actually uh, depriving the Jews from their properties and their means of uh, survival. Uh, when in Bulgaria, uh, when in uh, April 1941, uh, the first the German uh, troops entered uh, Yugoslavia and Greece, both countries were occupied by the Germans. And in April 1941, parts of uh, these territories, uh, uh, parts of Yugoslavia, which is Macedonia, and uh, uh, part of Greece, which is uh, Aegean Trace uh, uh, in Greece, territories that Bulgaria considered uh, historically, uh, you know, uh, belonging to, uh, to the country and ethnically populated by Bulgarians. Uh, so the Germans moved in first, and then they gave these territories to be administered by uh, the Bulgarians. So in April 1941, the Bulgarian administration uh, was uh, established uh, in the so-called new territories, um, which are part of uh, Greece and Yugoslavia. Uh, people in this so-called new added territories uh, automatically uh, received Bulgarian citizenship, and uh, with the exception of the Jews. So the all the local population there received automatically Bulgarian citizenship with the uh, exception of the Jews. So they were deprived of their uh, citizenship. They didn't receive Bulgarian citizenship. And uh, these people actually were without uh, any uh, protection. In the same time, uh, all the anti-Jewish legislation was uh, valid for, for them. Uh, in uh, uh, 1942, uh, the parliament adopted a new law providing the government with the legislative power to adopt all those measures necessary for the settlement of the Jewish question. And uh, so, uh, and the government decrees were confidential, not published in the state journal, and no public scrutiny over them existed. So actually, uh, the the government uh, realized that uh, uh, the anti-Jewish policy wouldn't meet, uh, you know, wouldn't be accepted by by uh, the the society. So they prefer to keep people in the dark about this, and everything was all the the decisions on the Jewish uh, issues were confidential, not published in the public journal, and um, uh, not even uh, discussed in the parliament anymore. You know, the decisions could be made by the government. 
And um, also under a government decree, a committee on Jewish issues was established in August 1942. And uh, its task was to organize the deportation of the Jews and the liquidation of uh, their properties. So the Bulgarians were supposed to follow, you know, the Nazi policy on the uh, Jewish uh, uh, question. And uh, we know that already in the beginning of 1942, in the conference in Vazé, the Nazis uh, uh, have already uh, made the, the, the final solution. So uh, uh, the, the, the countries in Europe were um, supposed to proceed with the deportation of uh, uh, the Jews. Furthermore, uh, Bulgaria um, has a written agreement uh, in February 1943 the head of the Commissariat on Jewish Issues uh, signed a written uh, agreement with the, uh, the Germans, with the German representative, uh, for the deportation of the Jews. So you see, we have all the negative uh, uh, conditions in Bulgaria. We have a country which is uh, ally of Germany with full anti-Jewish legislation, uh, with a written agreement for the deportation of the Jews. And we will see that uh, despite of all those uh, facts, for three and a half years, the Jewish population will live in the country and no one would be deported or will uh, die as a Jew. So uh, the first step of the deportation was the deportation of the Jews from the so-called new territories, the territories in Macedonia, Yugoslavia, and the uh, trace in, in, uh, in Greece. So uh, with the participation of the Bulgarian administration, 11,343 Jews from the new added territories were deported. They were deported uh, uh, in Treblinka and almost uh, all of, uh, of them perished. So uh, this is uh, um, uh, something that uh, we commemorate each year when we speak about the rescue of the, the Jews from the, the 48,000 Jews from the old borders of Bulgaria. We always commemorate uh, the tragic uh, fate of the Jews from, from uh, these territories of Thrace and uh, Macedonia. After this deportation, it was on the agenda, the deportation of the Jews from the all the borders of uh, the country and the country was the, the state was supposed to proceed with the deportation and it was preparing for the deportation of the Jews. They received, you know, the from the police, the instructions to together at a certain point with the uh, 20 kilos of luggage and uh, the deportation was prepared from the authorities without, uh, you know, uh, uh, saying anything to, to the public. But because these Jews in Bulgaria, they were the Jews that we mentioned before, the friends, the colleagues, the neighbors, those who lived among the others. So information started leaking. This is how it all started in Bulgaria, because the, the, the rumors started spreading, the information started leaking, people knew each other, they started talking to each other, they started talking, uh, you know, saying to the Jews that something is going to happen, something we, we have to do, we have to resist. And uh, we will see in March 1943, when the deportation was scheduled, the resistance from uh, different parts of the Bulgarian society. Uh, this is the, the, the first time in the Bulgarian history when we have uh, people from the whole political spectrum, from far left to far right, you know, uh, united uh, uh, in one cause. I mean, all those people that were politically totally different and had nothing to do with, with uh, each other as uh, views and beliefs, you know, we have uh, examples for uh, people from all the political spectrum speaking uh, uh, against the, the deportation. We have uh, the Union of the Bulgarian Writers, the Union of the Bulgarian Lawyers, the Union of the Bulgarian uh, Medical Doctors, uh, sending uh, uh, protest letters to, to the Tsar and the, the government. Uh, uh, we have many intellectuals. Uh, we have um, the whole synod, holy synod of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church. We have the Metropolits, uh, uh, the leaders of the church uh, speaking openly, pleading uh, to the government, uh, seeking uh, meetings with the Tsar himself, you know, to uh, 
uh, uh, to ask him to cancel the, the deportation. Uh, the Jews, we have two uh, parallel actions in the city of Plovdiv and in the city of Kustendil. The, the local Jews were gathered there, uh, preparing, you know, for the trains. And in the city of Kustendil, the local uh, population, there was a delegation of four prominent citizens of city of Kustendil, Bulgarians, who immediately formed a delegation, went to the capital, to Sofia, and uh, asking for a meeting with the vice president of the National Assembly, Dimitar Peshev, who was from their city, from Kustendil. So the Bulgarian delegation went there, spoke to Dimitar Peshev uh, and asked him to do something. And what he did was to organize a protest letter signed by 43 MPs in the parliament. Uh, uh, it was uh, the petition of Dimitar Peshev. He is one of the righteous among the nations uh, um, from Bulgaria, uh, recognized in Yad Vashem. Uh, so uh, this uh, MPs, 43 MPs signed uh, this protest letter against the deportation. And actually, uh, it cost uh, Dimitar Peshev his position. He was immediately removed from his position of vice president of the National Assembly. But we already have this uh, wave of indignation in the Bulgarian society, you know, coming this protest from all kinds of the, the society, from the professional organization, from the church, uh, from the MPs, uh, from the parliament, and from many ordinary people. In the same time, we have... Um, uh, the uh, the Jews in Plovdiv, uh, uh, the the second biggest city in Bulgaria, they were gathered there, also pre prepared for uh, being deported, and uh, the the leader of the Bulgarian Orthodox Church, the Metropolit of uh, of Kirill of Plovdiv, he went there. They were in a local school. There was a fence, so he jumped over the fence and he said, "I'm going to with the Jews wherever you take them. I'm going with them." So, and he started, you know, um, seeking for him uh, to speak with uh, the Tsar and uh, with the chief of the Cancellaria of, of the uh, of Tsar Buris and uh, also with the police, uh, chief police uh, in the city. So all those efforts were um, aimed to, uh, to make something to, to prevent the deportation. And... Um, Actually, we don't have an official cancellation of the deportation. On the contrary, we have a written agreement for the deportation and not a document or anything, you know, like canceling it officially. But uh, uh, the government didn't proceed with it. With it. So uh, the, final, the final decision could be made by the, the Tsar himself because he was the main political factor in an authoritarian state. So nothing could happen without his, uh, his final word and sanction. So um, he, he realized that uh, it wouldn't go uh, smoothly, that it became you know, too, too visible, too obvious. And uh, the, the wave of indignation from all parts of the society was uh, um, very, very uh, uh, strong. So uh, in his next meeting with Hitler and Ribbentrop in April 43, uh, Tsar Boris uh, said to Hitler that, okay, we are going to deport the Jews, but not outside the country. We are going to deport them in Bulgaria. In the, we need them for the construction of roads in the, in the country. So uh, there are labor groups uh, and we will uh, uh, put the, the male Jewish population in these labor group, groups for the uh, construction of, uh, of uh, roads. So uh, uh, this is how actually none of the Bulgarian Jews was deported outside of the borders of the country to the death camp, so no one died. Um, uh, actually, I will just quote here a very short quote from a document uh, of the German Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where we read the following, I quote, the practical result by the use of Jews in the construction of roads and railway lines in Bulgaria until today is particularly insignificant. For example, in the area of Stara Zagora, they mobilized around 2,000 Jews who in the presence of untrained and poor supervisors work for only a few hours every day and live in comfort. We must conclude that the Bulgarian government is obviously using the labor battalions basically as a pretext against our wish 
for a deportation. So uh, we have uh, one more um, uh, action in, in uh, May uh, uh, 1943, uh, when the deportation of the Jews from the capital Sofia started. So they had to be deported in the countryside, in the, uh, in the countryside. So the Jews themselves uh, uh, protested. So we have a manifestation, a demonstration of the Jews themselves in the city of Sofia, um, uh, and also, uh, it was 24th of May, the day of Kirill and Methodi, the Slavic uh, saints. Um, so there was a liturgy in the church. And during the liturgy, uh, the leader of the church, Metropolit uh, uh, Stefan, he condemned the power for, for their policy against the Jews, which was very strong uh, uh, message because, you know, um, the, the church and the state at that time, they were not separated according to the constitution. It's not like today. And we have the demonstration of the Jews themselves. Nevertheless, uh, uh, they were deported. Uh, um, uh, the male population uh, uh, between 18 and 55 years were um, sent in this uh, labor battalions, labor groups. Uh, uh, no one died there as a Jew. I mean, do not imagine like uh, the labor camps and what we associated with uh, uh, the camps, uh, okay, it was a labor group, it, life is not easy, it's a heavy uh, uh, labor, but no one uh, died there. The women and the children were uh, sent to uh, local Jewish families in the countryside or non-Jewish families in the countryside. And they, they lived there for one uh, uh, year and, and more than one year. And they were accepted by the local families. Uh, and uh, I will mention this uh, at the end. I'm going to, uh, to conclude with the, the concrete uh, uh, facts and events. Uh, the death of uh, Tsar Boris uh, in August 1943, uh, the Tsar died. Uh, and uh, actually, his, his uh, death contributed to the uh, help the, uh, on the Jewish question because the Germans, and we read it in the German documents, uh, uh, the Germans uh, um, lowered the pressure. They, sa they, they say, you know, in Bulgaria, the Tsar was an ally. Now he's dead. We don't know if Bulgaria will switch sides. Uh, it's not uh, any way, you know, uh, uh, reliable ally. Uh, so uh, we are not going to put uh, more pressure on the Jewish uh, question now. So in, uh, in that uh, sense, the death of the Tsar uh, actually... Uh, helped uh, uh, the Jews. And um, we will see the, the Minister of Interior saying that, I quote, we will not deport any more Jews. They re will remain wherever they are. So nothing will be done, you know, uh, silently, just uh, uh, it will not be proceeded with uh, any other um, uh, uh, measures. And um, Actually, in September 1944, the Fatherland Front uh, uh, government, the, the resistance dominated by the communists, took over in Bulgaria. And um, so the uh, anti-Jewish legislation was uh, a new. So for, for the Jews, the, the, this Fatherland Front was uh, actually uh, the government that uh, uh, put end uh, of uh, the threat for the Jews that uh, was... Uh, imposed on them for three and a half years. And um, so we will have a, a full cancellation, annulment of the anti-Jewish legislation in September 1944. And uh, we have a people's court in Bulgaria, uh, which took place um, at the beginning of 1945, between January and April 1945. The, the war was still going on. But uh, the seventh unit of this People's Court was actually the first uh, Holocaust uh, uh, trial uh, in the world because the war was still the war was still going on. But the uh, the seventh unit of the People's Court was only uh, entirely against uh, uh, the uh, the anti-Jewish policy and those who were responsible for for this. And actually, there is a, an American historian, Dr. Stephen Sage from the Washington Holocaust Museum, who first uh, wrote about this. There is an article uh, in English uh, by Stephen, Dr. Stephen Sage, 
about this first Holocaust uh, trial in uh, the world. And I will conclude with, uh, of course, because there, uh, um, I'm expecting your questions and comments, not just questions, but the, your views and opinions. Um, when I try to conclude with uh, uh, who uh, who saved the Bulgarian Jews, this is, you know, uh, the, the question, because it's much more complicated. The reality is not black and white. And uh, people are not black and white and only good and bad. And the uh, reality is always much more complicated than the definitions that we are trying to squeeze it in. So um, it's not to just to say, uh, um, you know, the rosy picture or the, uh, the black and white. It's uh, so what I will try to say uh, why this case is unique, not just because we have a whole community intact, you know, but from one uh, hand, we have the whole community from the older borders of Bulgaria fully rescued, survived, but, you know, intact. We have the same people before the war and after the war. And these people went to Israel. They left en masse in 1948 after the establishment of the state of Israel. And they are still there. And I have met them many times. So the, their answer is, they say Bulgaria saved us. You know, they, they don't specify the roles of certain uh, people or institutions because it's the, the whole feeling of, you know, they say we were in Bulgaria and we uh, we are alive. These are our 48,000 lives. So we we testify about this. But on another hand, we have, of course, the deportation of the Jews from the so-called new new added territories to Bulgaria. And uh, uh, so we see that it's not uh, just uh, the, 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 the rosy picture and uh, these people perished uh, in Treblinka. But when is, we speak about the different factors, because it's a combination of different uh, uh, factors uh, uh, that, that made this uh, uh, European exception possible, I would like, of course, the role of the church, of Peshev, the MPs, the intellectuals. Uh, of course, we know all those things. But we don't speak here about something that happened in a short period of time or just uh, several actions or something that uh, was done and that's it. We speak about three and a half years in very, uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned, negative and uh, bad circumstances for the Jews in Bulgaria. And nevertheless, none of those people uh, were deported or died in Bulgaria. So we speak about the behavior of the majority of the people. So because it's a matter of behavior, how people treated the Jews. Of course, we cannot say the whole population. We have different kinds of people. We, we have pro-Nazis, we have different people. But the majority of the Bulgarians behaved in a way that gave alibi to, to the Tsar or all those institutions that we mentioned to, to act and to, to speak up for the Jews and to stand up and, uh, to, and uh, eventually to make it possible, uh, you know, to have this deportation not canceled, but not, uh, uh, not uh, uh, really happening. So, um, and uh, uh, when we see, speak sometimes about civil society, modern society, uh, I would like to say that at that time, the Bulgarian society was 80% agrarian population, agrarian society. So most of the people have never met a Jew. They had no idea that the Jews were only in the capital and in the big cities. So it was not a modern society. But modernity is not uh, always a sign of humanity. It doesn't mean that being more modern, you're more human. Because this patriarchal society, rural population, had a very good barometer, very sound barometer for good and bad. So it's not just because these people are Jews. It's just because it's not right to, to do this to them, you know. Uh, so I believe that one of the main factors is uh, uh, this uh, perception of the ordinary Bulgarians, because they were those who, who treated the Jews for three and a half uh, years that way that made uh, this possible. So thank you very much for, for listening to me, <laughs> and uh, I will be happy to, to hear your comments and questions.
Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's for people on Zoom. So we can only have one mic on at the top. So I will okay, walk around. This one too, yeah, no problem. I will walk around. Sure. Is it on? It is on. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Um, we can You mentioned that there was uh, there was people on the right joining people on the left in opposing the legislation, and I was wondering what that looked like for the people on the right. Uh, you mentioned the far right, so who are the fascists who are opposing? Deportation and how does that work? Good question. I have the same exact <laughs> It's kind of unimaginable. Yes, I would love to hear. No, yes, uh, we we have uh, some examples of MPs uh, who are supposed to be okay. We don't have in the in the parliament political parties. Uh, you know, uh, although we have people belonging belonging to this uh, political parties before they were uh, uh, forbidden. So that's how, how we can say who belongs to the left and uh, to the right. Uh, but we have uh, even some of uh, uh, the, the writers, the intellectuals uh, who were, I, I wouldn't say pro fascist uh, when we say uh, the right, it, uh, it doesn't mean necessarily pro, pro, pro Nazis, especially during these times. But we have for many of the, those intellectuals who, who spoke. Uh, uh, Against uh, the deportation, against the, the law for the protection of, uh, of the nation. Of course, we have people from the other side too, but uh, but we have uh, uh, also speaking in advance. Yeah, I don't know if it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for this very uh, well-detailed uh, narrative. Uh, it is a also a very convoluted and conflicting in many ways a story. Uh, I would like to ask you, what was actually the uh, Nazi law uh, that would, uh, for example, punish those who were pro-Jewish. We know that all other countries in Europe had a very severe system of punishment, uh, even for giving a loaf of bread to or saying a good word uh, or protecting in any way uh, Jews. Um, what was the law that Nazis introduced in Bulgaria? No, we don't have uh, any any punishment uh, because the case was quite different in Bulgaria. When the anti-Jewish legislation was, uh, uh, th th there is no uh, punishment for those who help Jews in Bulgaria. We have uh, the law for the protection of the nation, which says, uh, you know, we deprive the Jews from their property, we remove them from the positions. Uh, um, they were uh, obliged to to declare them their bank accounts, everything in the national bank to to have the yellow stars here. Uh, so the yeah, were implemented. they were implemented to a certain extent. What the Germans say all the time in their reports uh, that we uh, we see that they are not happy with the way uh, they they say we have full and heavy anti-Jewish legislation, but the Bulgarians do not implement it the, the way it should be implemented because they say it's quite loose the way they implement it. For example, in schools, I can give examples with the schools because not with the property, the property was uh, uh, taken. Uh, uh, but for example, in the schools, they were supposed to uh, to remove students uh, from, from the university, for example, from uh, uh, high school. And it hasn't been done at, 
wasn't done at many, many uh, um, uh, places in the country. So we have reports and they say they don't do this. So because, uh, I'm sorry, to yeah, yeah. but just, uh, because Bulgaria had its own agency, its own administration as an ally uh, to the Nazis, it was not interested in introducing those um, punishments that, that you know that were known in other parts of the world where actually helping Jews was um, equal to suicide. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and also you have a very strong it destroyed the Ukraine story in Lithuania, part of Lithuania, yeah. Poland. Poland. Yes, I think that it's uh, mostly because the Jewish uh, question was left to the Bulgarians, more or less. So, and the Bulgarian, the Bulgarians had other issues with other minorities. Let's say it's not like uh, having no ethnic or other issues in Bulgaria, but not with the Jews. So, and because the Germans were were not there, it was mostly the Bulgarians, the Bulgarian state, the Bulgarian administration dealing with uh, uh, the the Jewish measures. They were not that eager to to pursue and to. Uh, there was no no reason for that. If there was an interest, it was the economical interest, you know, to confiscate the property, uh, but not to to do something more because there was no that that feeling that need in the society. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that. Historically, the Bulgarian society was not anti-Semitic for, for also because of the profile of the community and for, for the historical context of the country. And it's, I will, uh, if you allow me, just a quote by Adolf Hans Beckerle, who was the, uh, the German ambassador in Bulgaria during the, um, the war. Uh, I quote, maybe he says it's better than I do. Uh, he says, Bulgarian society does not understand the real meaning of the Jewish question. Next to the few rich Jews, there are many poor workers and craftsmen. Having grown up with Greeks, Turks, Roma, and the ordinary Bulgarians does not understand the meaning of the struggle against Judaism. Even more, that the racial question from its nature is incomprehensible to him. So uh, it's just not the Jewish and the racial question, which is the question in Bulgaria. And what I'm trying to say is that not because Bulgarians are better people than the others. You know, they have other issues, but not with the Jews. And uh, yeah, I guess this is one of the, the, the reasons, maybe the, the Consul General and the... Sponsors have advantage. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, first, uh, thank you, Professor History, of um, presenting uh, us the story of the rescue of Bulgarian Jews and also the fate of uh, the Jews uh, on Bulgarian lands. Um, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first probably uh, will answer better the first question regarding uh, how the the right uh, majority in, in the parliament uh, uh, acted uh, in support of the Jews. So my first question is uh, regarding the fate uh, of the people uh, who signed the petition led by the deputy speaker uh, of the parliament, uh, what was uh, their fate? What happened with them after the, the communists uh, took over the government? And um, pretty much this will explain uh, the, the first question probably better. And also my, my, my second question is, uh, what is the contemporary uh, paradigm of the the bright example given by the Bulgarians uh, to save uh, entire Jewish population. How can this be translated in today's uh, uh, rising wave of anti-Semitism? I think we. I will start with the second question because it's very important when we speak about the Holocaust, it's not about the Jews. The Holocaust is not about the Jews only. It's uh, about humanity and it's about all of us. That's why we speak. You know, it's not uh, just uh, why the Jews. No, because it's uh, it's very relevant to what is happening today. So uh, what the Bulgarian 
uh, case is a positive uh, example uh, gives us are the moral standards that uh, are uh, that, that our grandparents uh, have uh, put these high moral standards that we we should uh, try to meet up this uh, uh, this uh, standards and also this example shows that uh, there is always a choice how what to do i mean even in the darkest uh, uh, moments of history even in the worst circumstances even uh, with the limited choice but still there is a choice you know and uh, um, the, the the majority of the bulgarian people made their choice to be human just human nothing more nothing special i mean this is the normal thing the the the, the other thing is not normal so this is the uh, my answer to the uh, for, uh, second question and the first question about the fate of those who signed uh, the petition of uh, Dimitar Peshev. It's very complicated because most of these people, when uh, after 1944, September 1944, uh, we have uh, um, the the Soviet regime, the communist regime in Bulgaria. Not immediately in 44, but until the end of 47, it became clear that it will be not just Soviet, but uh, the the Stalinist type of of regime. So uh, most of these people, although they they helped the Jews. Uh, they were uh, either sentenced by the people's court, so they don't have a, uh, they, they have most of them tragic fate. Some were uh, uh, sentenced to, to prison because belonging, you know, they were MPs in the pro-fascist regime. This, this is how the, the communists uh, uh, view the previous regime. They said it was a, a fascist regime, uh, uh, of the Tsar, and uh, so everything about this regime is negative. You know, we have each time uh, we have a new narrative. For example, during the communist times, the narrative about the the these events, there were nothing about the church, nothing about uh, the tsar, nothing about uh, anything else. It was just the role of the communist illegal at that time, uh, the illegal communist party in the salvation of the Bulgarian Jews, and personally the leader, the communist leader Todor Zhivkov. And of course, it's highly exaggerated. I mean, especially the leader's participation. There are no proofs at all about this. Yes, it's true that a lot, a lot of, um, especially the young members of the illegal communist party, they sided with the Jews. They they participated in this demonstration in uh, uh, May uh, 1943. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, the narrative during communism was, uh, you know, highly exaggerating the contribution of the Communist Party. So um, yes, the fate of the many of those forty-three MPs who signed the petition is uh, is not good uh, after the the war. So uh, Peshev himself, uh, he was not uh, uh, sentenced, but um, he was. Uh, mm, ostracized let's put it this way and many others were sentenced uh, to to prison or a different uh, uh, years in prison for for belonging to the previous regime and supporting the this regime yeah um. So what happened in Bulgaria with some of the other groups that had very harsh treatment under most of the other Nazi regimes, like the Roma and people with disabilities and homosexuals? Did Bulgaria stand up for them as well, or did they just never really enter the picture? Thank you. They were not at all in the picture. There is no, they were not in the legislation, they were not mentioned, they were not touched. I mean, they are totally out of the picture in Bulgaria. It was a, on, only anti-Jewish legislation, nothing to do they, in Bulgaria. And that time they don't speak about the homosexuals or things like that. It was not even mentioned that they exist. So no, they, they are not in the picture at all, no. Uh, so, so thank you very much. Uh, I have a kind of a couple nested questions. Um, for me, the broadest question is to what, I mean, and I'm not sure to what to be the sources let you reconstruct this, but can, but I take it from the way you described the process that there was broad general knowledge of what was going to happen to those who were deported. That is, 
right? Um, so one question I suppose I have is to what degree, in degree you can reconstruct this, um, is this, is this openly discussed? Is part of the discourse um, expressly about knowledge that deportation means murder? A sort of second right of that question is, is there any kind, any way to measure the ways in which people thought, different kinds of people, policymakers, folks in civil society, about the fact of the deportations from the so-called new territories? That is, was there already an awareness of those kinds of that, of that double fate? And then the last part of the question is, and this is maybe also an invitation to kind of a larger sociological comparison that comes back to Bojena's question about societies where there were forms of choice under Nazis. I mean, one thing that, you know, Bulgaria is quite exceptional in so many ways that you've illustrated, but in other ways, of course, you could compare lots of aspects of this story, except for the happy ending for 80% of the Jews, to the situation of other uh, Jewish communities under allies of the Germans, Romania, Hungary, and, and maybe more directly, um, Italy. In all those cases, you have differential treatment of our Jews and these new Jews in the borderlands. And it's always, uh, I mean, utterly lethal to be the new Jews in the borderlands. And then there are various, even in a place like Romania, right, in Bucharest, where there's a very robust murderous anti-Semitism, even so every elite has his favorite Jew. And, you know, you, you, same thing happens, of course, in Budapest, Jew raised post the Hasidic Jews of the East. And it's only when Eichmann gets there himself that he fixes that problem, right? So in all of those settings, you actually have, although the outcome is very different, you have very similar kinds of divisions being made by semi fascistized in civil society with a fair degree of um, agency and range of choice as to what it wants to do to its Jews right now, with the, of course, with the German prospect of direct intervention looming. And then Italy is interesting because there you also have very, you don't have terribly robust anti-Semitism and you have very, very um, substantial kinds of interweaving of the Jewish community into everyday life, which doesn't always end up meaning that Italian Jews aren't ultimately killed and targeted. So. I, I guess I'd like to understand two things. One actor distant, your sort of sociological take, and then one also the actors themselves. To what degree are the actors themselves, including the Romani uh, Bulgarian state, looking at these other allies and saying, oh, well, so for instance, we could just make up labor battalions because the Hungarians did it and the Germans left their Jews alone. Of course, their other battalions were far worse, but um, are they learning from other allies as to how to maneuver vis-a-vis -vis the Germans for uh, to the degree they wish to for Jews? And then from your standpoint, what do we learn by thinking about Bulgaria as maybe in, in one very deep way, an outlier, but in other ways, structurally not so different from the way these other kinds, these three other allies of the German state negotiated what to do with different kinds of Jews? Okay, thank you very much for, for um, uh, your questions and, and opinion. It's very interesting uh, uh, perspective uh, that you're putting here. Uh, I'll start from the beginning. I'll try to uh, answer as much as I could uh, uh, of uh, your questions. Uh, no, uh, it was not clear that people are going to be deported to some death camps or they will die there. No, it was not clear, definitely. Uh, but it was clear that they will be sent somewhere, somewhere outside the country and probably something unknown and bad probably will happen to them because it's not, uh, yeah, obviously it's not a positive thing, you know, to, to have only 20 kilos of luggage and to leave your home and uh, with all those measures imposed on them before. So it was a threat. It was clearly something uh, bad, but it was not clear that they, they are uh, dead camps. But, but not only for the Bulgarians, it was not, I guess, it was not uh, um, known, or, or at least people didn't believe it when the first uh, people, uh, you know, spread the information about the, the death camps. Um, well, uh, if uh, uh, Bulgaria is learning from the other allies, it, Bulgaria is quite different ally. Not only because it's not uh, uh, fighting, and it's the only one, you know, the Romanians, the, the Hungarians, they are fighting uh, 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 on the Eastern Front. The Second World War was not the war of Bulgaria, if I can put it this way. Uh, the only thing that the Bulgaria tried to, to gain from this uh, alliance with Germany was to get back these territories, if possible, to get back what we consider ours and not to fight. And Bulgaria didn't even broke diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union until September 1944. 
We were in diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union. So it was like uh, the whole policy of uh, uh, Tsar Boris was to procrastinate, to maneuver, if it's possible not to do, you know, anything just to uh, and not to uh, if there is something that we can uh, really uh, uh, grant him the merits for uh, is for not allowing Bulgarians to die in the Second World War. Because now we speak about the Jews, but let's put it in the whole historical context. This is the Second World War. This is the bloodiest war in the, in the history of the, the humankind. So the Jews was not the most important uh, question for, for no one at that time. You know, Now we speak about uh, this like a separate issue, but uh, let's put it in the whole historical context. So people didn't care especially about the Jews. So. Uh, when you ask about the, the Jews from the, the, the so-called new edit territories, yes, no one tried to save them. No, not only because people, first of all, people didn't know, but even if they knew, they, they wouldn't do it because they wouldn't consider these people our friends, colleagues, uh, comrades from the wars and so on. You know, they're like uh, other people. And... Uh, so I guess that it's uh, it's much more complicated. Tsar Boris was not anti-Semitic himself, and he wouldn't be happy to deport the Jews because he knew that he didn't want it, the, the, the population wouldn't uh, uh, want this. But probably he would have proceeded with the deportation because he's an ally and he had to do something. He had to fulfill at least part of the engagements to Germany. And if the Germans pressurized more and put more pressure on, on him, and if there was no that alibi that all of those uh, factors we mentioned gave him, probably he would have proceeded with this. So it's very difficult to compare to Romania, to Hungary, because we have a lot of anti-Semitic feelings in these countries and the profile of the Jewish communities there is different. So uh, they could easily associate, uh, those who wanted could easily associate uh, the Jews with the negative images of the Nazi propaganda, either with the Jew capitalist, you know, sucking blood or, or the, the Jew agent of the Bolshevik evil. Those images in Bulgaria didn't have any ground. They simply couldn't, uh, couldn't work there. So I tried to, <laughs> I hope I tried to answer your questions. So we have a question from the Zoom. Um, Robert wants to know <clears throat> why things were so much different in the new territories. Why were those Jews deported and killed? Like, why, do, why did the Bulgarian people who live there think of them differently? I, I think I just mentioned this, that uh, uh, it was part of the policy the, 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 of Bulgaria as a ally of Germany. So Bulgaria followed this anti-Jewish policy as part of its uh, engagement as a German ally. And uh, so, uh, and the, the people, the Bulgarians, they wouldn't, uh, first of all, as I mentioned, they didn't know about the deportation of the Jews from the new added territories. They wouldn't know even for the deportation of the Jews from the, uh, the old borders of Bulgaria. But even if they knew, probably no one would have tried to do anything because these were just like not their Jews, not the, let's say the Jews that they were working, living with uh, and being friends and uh, recognizing as their own people. So it's it's complicated, and I said it's the it's the Second World War. All the countries, all the the, the people have much bigger problems than than the Jews. So I think it was in Bulgaria. It was not like a specifically designed decisions made about saving the Jews. It was a spontaneous reaction to to something bad that was preparing to be done to to some of our people, if I can put it this way. Rather, a, a sort of a um, combination of a lack, a lack of will to kill. Also, yeah, okay. also yes, also yeah. the turn of the so, war in uh, 1940. Many, many factors, but we we have this combination in Bulgaria uh, working yes. on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh no no! I'll, no, I'll no just, I just wanted to. Uh, okay. 
Hi. So after hearing this, it feels it sounds as though I guess Hitler didn't pressure Bulgaria too much. But I'm my main question is like why is that? I understand that Bulgaria was one of the states that did not fight. But why wasn't there any like pressure from Germany for them to fight or, you know, any like maybe like troops coming in from Germany, like to maybe help them or force them to implement the laws that were there that were anti-Semitic? Yes, so the, the question is basically why there was no more pressure on Bulgaria and why it uh, there was no pressure to fight, uh, for example. Uh, it's because of another specific of, uh, of Bulgaria and the specific relations with the Russians, uh, uh, because Bulgaria was uh, uh, liberated after far, five centuries of Ottoman rule as a result of Russian-Turkish wars. So the Russians were considered liberators of Bulgaria. So there was this specific uh, relations with them. And uh, so it was, uh, and, and as I mentioned, Bulgaria didn't want to, to fight generally. So uh, the Tsar realized, and even Hitler realized, that's why he didn't put more pressure on Bulgaria, that you could not motivate the Bulgarian army to fight against the, the Russians, the Soviets, for the uh, the benefits of the Germans, and you know they are, uh, you know, they are war for for more. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it was a, a, a specific uh, case. By the way, the the Bulgarian Tsar was German. His in his origin was uh, German, so he he had also special ties with uh, with Germany. You had a question. So. I'd like to hear more about what was going on right after the war that led to the Bulgarian community en masse deciding to leave, despite the fact that they had been so relatively well treated compared to any other country. Thank you for this question, because for me, it's always important, Bayabi. For me, it's always important uh, what happens after the war, not only during the war. Um, yes, the Bulgarian Jewish community uh, uh, was intact from the old border. So we have the same 48,000 uh, uh, people, even, even more because of naturally, you know, growing uh, during the war. And the first post-war years, uh, the Jewish community had excellent relations with the, the the fatherland front government, or let's put it, it was a coalition, left coalition, but let's put it the communist uh, uh, government. And uh, first of all, because for, for them, the communist government, you know, put an end of all the threats uh, uh, that existed before. But the government also uh, uh, had excellent relations with the Jews because Bulgaria had to sign a peace treaty. And the peace treaty was signed in 1947. So the government also used the, the, the Jewish community and its international ties and the, for, for and the, the community to lobby for, for the new government. And when was the Paris Peace Conference in 1946? There is a special memorandum from the Bulgarian Jewish Consistoria. It's an official document sent to the Paris Peace Conference in defense of the Fatherland Front government. And they said, uh, we insist that in the Bulgarian peace treaty shouldn't be any special clauses about the minorities and the Jews because we the Holocaust didn't happen in Bulgaria. So it, only the Bulgarian peace treaty signed in February 1947, uh, I mean only in the Bulgaria as a former German ally, there is no special clause, clause about the, the minorities or about the Jews. No, it was returned, of course, the, uh, when after the, uh, not much before the peace treaty, when uh, Bulgaria uh, uh, asked for a truce with the allies and declared war on Germany in September 1944 and switched sides. Actually, Bulgaria fought only against Germany and from September 44 until May 45. Of really fighting, and um, this theory, of course, the Bulgarians had to uh, withdraw fully, withdraw from the Yugoslavian and Greece territories. So, it, and to be in the old borders. So the borders remained the same before the war and after the war. 
Did, didn't get to the core of yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes, just a few sentences. Yes. So uh, when the state of Israel was established, the Bulgarian Jews were allowed to leave. When I say allowed to leave, this is 1948. We already have the, the Stalinist uh, uh, period in Bulgaria. So the rest of the Bulgarians were not allowed to leave the country. Only the Jews were allowed to leave with the benediction of Moscow which didn't have, was not granted to the Soviet Jews. So, but the Bulgarian Jews were allowed to leave, even the communists to the state of Israel. So the community left en masse, 90%, 45,000 Bulgarian Jews left to Israel. And I have asked them many times why. First of all, they were Zionists. Uh, and uh, of course the state of Israel was a natural attractive centers for all of the Jews. But also because in Bulgaria it became clear that we will be a Soviet regime and there was already nationalization of the property, not of the Jewish property, of the pro industrial property of all the, the people and the Soviet regime. So the Jews left and they were allowed to, to leave. <laughs> um, they cherish Bulgaria, they, they absolutely, you have to ask them <laughs> about uh, how they feel about them. Thank you for the nice uh, lecture tonight. Uh, my question is, um, besides the organized internal resistance from the population and uh, members of the parliament, were there any other attempts of uh, prominent members, uh, diplomats or any kind of other people to uh, save uh, as, as many as possible Jews, even outside Bulgaria? Thank you for, for reminding me to mention this. Uh, we have uh, several Bulgarian diplomats uh, who worked uh, abroad and uh, we know their names. They are, these are uh, documented cases, um, uh, diplomats who issued transit visas, especially for, uh, for, for Jews, of course, but especially for Jewish children to come from Romania through Bulgaria, um, through Turkey to Palestine. This was the rule. So we have also the, the contribution of some Bulgarian diplomats uh, who issued uh, visas. And it's of course against the policy of their government. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe the Council General will explain that uh, in, it was uh, acknowledged by the Polish government, one of the Bulgarian diplomats uh, who issued visas and uh, from other countries as well. Yes, we have this. Um, just a quick question. What happened? You mentioned that the property was seized from the Jews. What happened after the war with the property? Very important question. Uh, all the rights of the Jews were restored immediately after September 1944. Uh, including uh, the, the process of restoring the property started, but then the nationalization uh, took place. I mean, not for the Jews, but for all the people in Bulgaria. So the Jews, of course, were, uh, you know, because they were city population, they had that kind of city property, what, which was uh, under the nationalization law. So it became very complicated, but what I can tell you, uh, well, it was restored, but because the community then left for Israel, there were special arrangements. They had to sell their property. There were some special lawyers uh, that were allowed to deal with these Jewish properties. Uh, they had to keep the money, I don't know, in the Bulgarian. But there were certain regulations because Bulgaria was a communist country and Israel later on, you know, was uh, not... Uh, uh, you know, sided with the West. So, uh, but yes, it was restored. And after the uh, the fall of communism in Bulgaria, uh, the communal property was fully uh, restored. The communal property is very important because now the Bulgarian Jewish community enjoys uh, quite a, <laughs> a good property and uh, quite a good income from this property in, in Bulgaria. That was also done in Slavic Sorry? It was also done in Salonika where the Jewish community, where the communal property of the Jewish community was restored to the Jewish community. Yeah, it was also done in Europe. Uh, can I characterize, not knowing anything about Bulgaria, 
uh, can I characterize the society as um, modernized, fully modernized, not modernized before World War II and during World War II? Um, well, uh, well, I wouldn't say it was modernized in the sense of uh, in the sense of the Western European modern society, because we have 80% rural population. So, uh, okay, owners, small owners, uh, some of them bigger owners of land, some smaller uh, owners of land, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not an industrial country. It's, yeah. it's not technolog technologically developed. In that sense, it's not uh, considered a modern society at that no. time. That I ask you is that there's a small uh, government uh, considers uh, the Holocaust as a part and consequence of modernity. So that is, for me, at least theoretically, uh, you know, again, an aspect of the peculiarities, particularities of the government. Yeah. So, Thank you all for, for the great questions. Um, it's actually eight o'clock, so we're going to take one more question if there is one. And otherwise, I'm going to invite you to help yourselves uh, uh, and continue the conversation informally. Thank you very much uh, for um, the informative lecture.